So today, by popular demand, I have a guy by the name of Larry Eaton. He's, he's the co-owner of EMEC Electrical Contractors and a wildlife enthusiast and all around very interesting guy. It's going to be a great discussion. So Larry, I noticed you 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 live in in Charleston. I live in Athens, Tennessee. So, but it says here River Bend Trail, Charleston. Yeah, that's the uh, company's uh, address. Oh, I see. Yes, River Bend. Where do I know? Where, where is River Bend? It's out. Uh, it's out on the uh, uh, eastern side, next to Hiawassee. I ride bikes through there. You ever see two guys riding bikes through there? <laughs> I'm always in the field. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> they're always flying me somewhere or, or looking at some uh, some issues with some substations or some company. On the courthouse square at 32nd Street is the law firm of Logan Thompson Law. Since 1965, they have served the legal needs for the good citizens of Cleveland Bradley County. If you've got a problem, they're no problem. Give them a call. So your your electrical contract is that what your your main your day job I guess you'd say? Yes. Uh... Uh, it's basically we do uh, about 90-95% of our uh, business is uh, industrial. We, uh, we stay with a lot of industrial plants and, and do maintenance and um, uh, special projects and stuff like that. Boy, that's a tough business, isn't it? It's very lucrative, but it's very demanding also uh, because of manpower and, and even the equipment at this point in time. Does the manpower, that is a real big issue right now, isn't it? It's, uh, right now, it's, it's the biggest issue that we have. <clears throat> um, and I'm a union, we're a union contractor. We, we hire through the union hall, and we actually uh, pay for people to go to, uh, to school for a five-year apprenticeship school. Um, and plus, all of their benefits are paid and we can't get any, any, any young men or women to, uh, to get in the trade and, and stick with it. What are they wanting to do? You know, you think, are they going to be a doctor, a lawyer, a business <coughs> person, sell insurance? What else is there? Well, in, in 2018, I was, in a, um, I was at a convention, and they, there was a statement made us in a class that the trades would be making more than doctors and attorneys are. And I'm seeing that now. We thought they were crazy. I heard the same thing. We yep. thought, well, I heard the old, uh, somebody say, if you, if you know how to dig a ditch, you could, you'll make $30 an hour. And I thought they were, they were crazy. And that, you know, the new uh, 25 is the new $16 an hour, isn't it? Yes, sir. And, and the thing about it is, is you're looking at a topped out, uh, a gentleman or lady in this area not traveling um, you've got uh, as a union contractor we've got uh, 32 almost 33 dollars an hour just a, just a JW, JW German wireman but all their benefits are paid so you've got to add that to uh, to their pay too so they're making roughly around 45 40, 45 dollars an hour plus and they're not having to travel. They're still at home, um, and they got they and ninety percent of everything's day shift. Boy, but 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 when you do when you do factory stuff, you can't be sort of dependable. You have to be the be there, right? Oh yes, I you mean can. there's no. It's it's not like a le, uh, uh, your residential where mm -hmm. the. Uh, you call a electrical company, and they may show up, and they may not. If uh, if you're kind of going into a uh, industrial, you better show up because there's somebody that will take your place. Um, but the thing about it is, the quality and quantity of uh, of the manpower is is so significantly higher uh, with mm -hmm. with our union uh, trades. They don't. A lot of those people that work on that industrial electrical stuff, 
the, the worker knows as much as the supervisor because they have to, because they have to work by themselves. Or Whereas in, in the residential wiring, there's usually one guy and three pulling wires and one knows how to ground. And But it's not as, I don't want to say as smart, but that's really what it is. It's just another level, isn't it? Oh yes, it's 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 a totally different uh, level than than a residential. Um, <clears throat> even our apprentices, one through fifth year apprentices, you can take a, a second, third year apprentice that are more highly qualified most of the time than most of your residential uh, electricians. And and even not just residential, but small commercial. What I do is a lot of small commercial. You can use a residential type of electrician if he's got a license high enough, because he can pretty well do it. There's not nothing different than the title of this commercial. Yes, you know, in, in, in the residential, and I'm not knocking any electrical yeah. in any way, form, or fashion, but uh, the, the, the trade skill is so much higher industrial because we're dealing with 480 volt. We're dealing with 13,000 volts. We're dealing with... Uh, 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 voltages that are extremely dangerous at some times and the equipment is sometimes our million dollar plus equipment that we need to make sure that's properly uh, wired uh, or you have yeah. a serious problem or a shutdown or the line can't move that's correct you know and and the thing about it is we have to make sure that if we have a time frame of two hours four hours or whatever We've got to finish that job in that timeline because manufacturing takes precedence over everything. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure those lines are running. Is that ner is that nerve wracking for you? Nervous? It used to be, but it it is rewarding knowing that when you walk away from a job, it was very well completed with uh, the manpower we have and um, uh, the satisfaction of the companies and return customers. The return customers are the, are the biggest thing because they know that we will do the, the job correctly. Can you get too many customers? Get overloaded? <laughs> right now, yes, because the manpower. The, you cannot get any more manpower uh, at this point in time. It's, it's, it's hard right now. I've about quit looking, <laughs> you know, because there's not much point. I have actually went into some of the schools, uh, high schools, uh, some of the high school graduates fixing to graduate uh, and explain that um, college is not for them um, and some of the some of the parents really get mad at me for saying that but uh, when I can show them a diagram of the pay scales and what even doctors and attorneys uh, uh, pay scales are and they have two three hundred thousand dollars of school debt and um, these tradesmen don't have the school debt because it's it's taken care of by the contractors. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a whole nother world, isn't it, than it, it was 20 years. <laughs> what would you say, 30 years ago it's different, or, yes, or 40? I, uh, what I, would you say? I started off at $5.45 an hour. Who'd you work for? Duncan Electric. Uh, Duncan was bought out by White Electric, and um, then uh, a, a gentleman named Gene, uh, Gene Miller started Miller Electric, and I was actually the first one to sign the books to go to work for Miller Electric. Were you in, out of Athens then? Uh, I still lived in Athens. We did a lot of work uh, in, in the plants up in that way, Bowater mm -hmm. and, and places like that. Um, but we still out of 175 in Chattanooga is, is the local. Which is not real local because it's way up there, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, there, there's about a 100 mile radius. And then you've got the one up in Knoxville, 760, and there's different locals all over the country. So if you, ha if you, do you, you, so you sometimes call and say, hey, I need two electricians up here, they'll, uh, yes. and they'll send them? Uh, what we'll do is we'll call the Union Hall, uh, call the, uh, uh, the, the one that oversees the, uh, the, the men that's not working. Mm -hmm. there, there'll be like a book one or a book two, and, and uh, there'll be... Sometimes there'll be 20, 30 people on the books and, and whoever wants to make that call, uh, in, in other words, wants to take that job, uh, can come in and sign, uh, sign the books and the one that's the top priority is the one that gets the job first. And, and, you're, and you're okay with that because you get somebody. 
I'm, it's not only getting somebody, but it's skilled labor. Mm -hmm. These guys, uh, the, these, these people are, um, have went through a five-year apprenticeship school. They've, they've went through uh, uh, numerous of German wiremen mm -hmm. while they were in apprentices mm -hmm. and, and uh, the, the jobs that you, that's at hand, uh, they can handle, yes. Plus, when you go to different factories, they have different safety rules and procedures. You have to know what their thing is, right? That's correct. You've got, uh, you have uh, TVA, which is government. There's different uh, scenarios and safety mm -hmm. uh, things. And then you go into chemical companies that's mm -hmm. got uh, some very, um, very bad chemicals that you have to know. And sometimes it's, it's a two-day safety course. That you have to you have to go through to go to even work in that plant. People, the normal person would have no idea that all of this is behind the scenes, would they? No, no, no a lot. Ninety, I would say, ninety percent of the people do not have a clue of of the amount of red tape that you have to go through for to to make sure that all employees are protected and know the dangers that they're getting into. Well, if we could reverse back, did you ever work for residential electrician or always on the industrial <clears throat> level? Well, when I was uh, going through apprenticeship school, I would actually have some people call me up and I would do what they, you know, you wasn't supposed to do, but I'd do side work yeah. for some people, uh, residential. And um, and like I said, residential is, is uh, minute compared to what we do. You almost... Uh, could not afford to wire a house the way you would an, a factory or a large commercial. You just it just cost too so much you wouldn't be able to afford it. That's true, and and the thing about um, industrial type of, of electrical companies and residential, we do a lot of uh, we cover workman's comp. Uh, there's a lot of insurances that we have to obtain li liability. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's ten. 10 million plus liability, uh, where you don't have that. Bonding, uh, yeah, I guess. Yes, the bonds, they're, they're, yes. You get into the bond issues, um, and uh, you actually get into uh, some safety equipment that is yeah. specialized that, that costs you quite a bit of money too. I used to get bonded for jobs, and it was so painful. I mean, they you had to report your income and expenses like every month, you'd have to have a, I'd have to have a full-time accountant sitting here to keep up my bonding capability. It was unbelievable. Your bonds uh, mean quite a bit, uh, especially when you go into a TVA or a government mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. um, your bonds is very, very important. Plus, isn't a bond like five or six percent of the job, something like that? Most time it's that and a little bit higher sometimes, yes. And that, that can throw your whole bid off. It, if it's, it, it if can, you figure it three and it was seven, it can it will throw your bid off. If you're not if God. you're not uh, looking and making sure that you dot your eyes and cross your t's, you you can uh, lose quite a bit on that. You ever see these trucks driving around town saying we're licensed and bonded? And I'm thinking, no, you're just licensed. You're not bonded because bonded's too hard to do. They just mean they got an insurance policy. That's right. That, that's uh, yeah. That's that's, that's all not saying. bonded. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's a it's a it's a whole different world. This uh, now maybe industrial maybe industrial hasn't changed as much as residential has has it in the last thirty years. <clears throat> industrial has changed quite a bit because now it there used to be a lot of accidents uh, on the jobs. And now, now there's a lot of with OSHA and uh, EPA and, and, and regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's helped to protect the employee because, like I said, when you get into industrial, it's uh, it's dangerous. It's Somebody could dangerous. fall into a vat or who knows what. You've got slippery surfaces. You've mm -hmm. got uh, uh, sometimes you're working 30, 40, 50 plus feet up in the air. Um, and uh, there's people underneath you. You've got there's a lot of there's a lot of variables that you have to mo make sure that you uh, that you protect yourself and and also the employees and people around you. Boy, 
Makes you be glad. Makes you glad for the weekends, doesn't it? <laughs> well, most of the time we're working on the weekends too. <laughs> right now, yes. Do you have? Uh, do you, but you're 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 born and raised in Athens. Uh, yes, I uh, I was uh, born in Athens, Tennessee. I've been, which which part? Uh, well, I was born in Athens, and I lived all my life between Inglewood and Athens, uh, out in the country. Uh, with my mom, mom and dad, I've been married uh, 31 years, so I've been living in Athens for over 31 years. Between Inglewood and Athens, that'd be between Inglewood, Athens, and Etowah, right? No, kind of in that. No, between Inglewood and Athens, you can go uh, uh, Highway 30 or Highway 39. Highway 30, Highway 30 goes to Etowah, and Highway 39 goes to Inglewood. Oh. So yeah, it's right between. I mean, it was basically right between Athens and. What was that Hill. called? Wasn't did it have a community name? Well, Cumberland Hills, uh, Wildwood Baptist Church area. Um, it was. It was in that area. It wasn't like uh, Easton Easton Alley. Is there Easton Alley in Athens? <laughs> Easton Alley is out in the country. Yeah, that's uh, it's that's the other direction. That's the other direction. Yes, yeah. towards Riceville. Yes. What about? Uh, um, Inglewood had the Tom Thumb, didn't they? That little drive-up restaurant. Remember that? A long time ago, yes, long sir. A long time ago. Yes, sir. <laughs> I remember that one, yes. <laughs> I think it was still in business for, for a while. They had one in, in Etowah, too. Yes. Yeah, they had one in Etowah. Uh, that one, uh, I can't remember. There's another place for uh, that, that took that place over, and I can't remember what it is right now. I can't either. I, I know they had the metal carports sort of out in front. That, that was a, one of your first Sonics type things, wasn't it? It was. <coughs> yes, that blue circle in Athens. The blue circle, yep. Athens is a good place to live, isn't it? Athens is a great place. It's, uh, uh, everybody has, everybody loves every, everyone. We, we have problems like everybody else does, but Athens is a great place. How many is in the county of, of well, Athens, uh, <coughs> Let's see what that, uh, I guess that'd be McMahon County, wouldn't it? Yes. Right now, the city of Athens has roughly around 14,000 people and it's growing mm -hmm. uh, tremendously. And uh, I think in Mc, uh, McMahon County total is 56,000. Whereas Bradley County is 100, 120 or so. 120 it's, or so. it's about double, yes. Mm -hmm. And the growth is coming to Athens because Bradley is running out of room. So, yeah, you know, we always think of. Uh, of uh, Vocker doing great things for Bradley County, but a lot of the people working there come from Athens. Yes, uh, we we have quite a few people that works at uh, Vocker and a few other places down in, in Cleveland, and we have some people from the Cleveland area coming to Athens for Denzo and and uh, ABB yeah. and a few other plants. Boy, it's something, isn't it? This whole region is, are, are you in your 50s yet? I'm 56, yes. So, so we both remember when it was nothing like that, right? I remember uh, growing up, we didn't, uh, my mom and dad didn't have that much money mm -hmm. uh, growing up. We didn't get to go out and ride around like yeah. we do now. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have the money, but uh, I do feel like that I was probably more rich back then I am now because of the, the, the family oriented. Um, the family was close, and uh, your neighbors were close to you. Mm -hmm. Everybody you touched was wanting to help you out, or you helped them out. And it's not like that now. It's not like that. I don't know anywhere it is like that, except maybe at church. Yes. Church, I guess, is that a little closer. Did you grow, did you grow up on a farm setting? I uh, I grew up. My mom and dad had uh, three to five acres, but everybody everywhere around me was a farm. We had uh, Mr. Gene Copeland. He's been dead and gone for a long time. He used to own a beef farm. So when I was a kid, we hauled hay. Haul hay. I hauled a bunch hay. of hay. I think that's where a lot of kids need to be doing right now. <laughs> Boy, do you remember how hard that was? Yes. Hot. Didn't stop for a break. Didn't stop. Well, water ever water while you was waiting on the wagon. Yeah, you was up on top of the wagon, ten foot up, you know, and, and the other boys throwing the hay up too. And uh, you uh, you drank the water while you was working. 
Boy, when you, and then when you got to the bar and you had to put it up in the attic and it you could not breathe. Yes. I'd chew tobacco and still couldn't breathe. I don't know why I didn't just spit the tobacco out, but that was the thing to do. Well, at the end of the day, we'd go down to the creek and jump in the in the mm -hmm. creek and never did think of anything like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, Boy, was, it was so place. hot. It was so hot. But looking back that built moral and character. Oh, absolutely. It, it built a lot of moral and character yeah, in a lot of people. Because you'd start at 8 o'clock in the morning and they'd, they'd be done about 7 o'clock. That'd be about about a week, three times a year, something like that. Yes, we went home, took a shower, didn't have air conditioner. Mm -hmm. my, my, my dad had a box fan in his room mm -hmm. where it sucked the air out mm -hmm. uh, in the other rooms, and we slept. With a black, with a uh, with a uh, just a sheet, and uh, and we never had any type of uh, allergies or anything. Isn't that something? Yeah. It's, it, it was, There's got to be some clue in there to that. Well, like I said, you know, God has blessed me more than I deserve, but I think, you know, picking ticks off of me at the end of the day, mm -hmm. after we went through the woods, you know, uh, I was really rich back then mm -hmm. with the family. And you had, I met good friends then that still got them. Yes, sir. You know, when you haul hay with somebody, you, you become friends because you're really kind of relying on them to do their load. Well, all of the, all of the family members around us, the Davises, uh, um, the Slacks, all of them, all of us was just, it was just a big, big family. Mm -hmm. And um, we would catch the bus in the school in the mornings. If we missed the bus, we'd go over to another lady's house mm -hmm. and, they would actually open up the door and and uh, where we'd stay warm, waiting on the bus, mm -hmm. and uh, that was that was what family and community was all about. And you didn't even really have to knock; just kind of knock as you're opening the door, right? <laughs> Most time, the screen the screen was latched, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, we had our windows wide open, you know, uh, during the during the summertime. Yeah. So I mean, it was. There was nothing. There was, there was only one time I can remember growing up. We had uh, we had some thieves, but then all the neighborhood everybody knew who they were. Right? Every, all the neighborhood grabbed their guns and went after yeah. them and and uh, found them, mm -hmm. and you know they got arrested. Mm -hmm. But but the neighborhood helped each other out, and that's one thing we're lacking these days. Do you think that uh, you remember when? Uh, on the Beverly Hillbillies when uh, Granny started cleaning the house and, Je and Jed says, that time of year again? She says, yeah, if we don't do spring cleaning, we'll, we'll all get sick. She took everything out of the house and dusted it off. And I guess that was maybe why people didn't have allergies back then like they do now. Well, you know, when we're, when we're subject to the atmosphere like we were back then, uh, you know, I had one pair of shoes. We went mm -hmm. barefooted all year, mm -hmm. all, all summer because we didn't want our shoes damaged and, mm -hmm. and, and ruined. And I mean, there was nothing for us to walk through the fields with bare feet. <laughs> and now mm -hmm. there's nobody that, that, uh, that enjoys the uh, atmosphere like we used to. I used to could walk through a gravel driveway and just, just like I was walking normal. And I probably couldn't take my shoe off now and put it on it. We used to run through it, but mm -hmm. now I don't think I could even I don't walk think through I it could now. either. <laughs> no. no. I miss those days, but but we want to have so much progress. I don't know if 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 it's you know if you fast forward it, you know bringing a, a bunch of industries in and bringing a bunch of people in. All of a sudden, I mean, we can't drive down Paul Huff right now. So it is is why is that prog? I don't understand why that's progress. Well, this is what I've been saying for a while. You can have progress, but you can have positive progress or just progress. And if you do not set things up to have a positive progress, you get these things. And that's one of the things that uh, even in the city of Athens, you know, we're fixing to grow. And we've got to start having positive instead of just having growth. Because we're having people come in from other states. Now, you mean like a plan to growth? A plan of growth, yes. Uh, infrastructure is the biggest thing. Um, you know, you see down here in Cleveland, you know, downtown, uh, downtown Cleveland, mm -hmm. Paul Huff, 
those are uh, growing pains. Mm -hmm. But uh, what if there was a plan put together for that in in the past? I don't know. But uh, yeah. that's that's one of the things that, that looking forward in Athens is we've got to, to look forward to the things that's going on. What if, it, what if a city didn't do anything? What would be the end result? Would it just people, it just get so crowded people wouldn't stay or wouldn't? move around or you know would it be like Gatlinburg where there were 11 red lights and nowhere to stand or well if you th if you really think about it it'd be chaos I mean if you if you do not build your infrastructure to and handle they, the if the road, they still come and if and they probably will come but then they'll build the buildings find that that there's no more growth and guess what they'll do they'll leave but the buildings are still there mm -hmm. so then you've got growth and you still not done anything. So I mean, it's it's a it's a catch twenty two, because if you're not going to plan on these things, if you're not going to plan on the roads, the sewage, the electrical, the uh, the water, the gas, uh, all these mm -hmm. entities have to be have to be thought of. And um, a lot of times, I can see cities not looking forward or looking in the in the future. Instead of here and now, and and that's and that's that's what catches them. I think a lot of them look at it as a twenty-year growth plan, but they don't worry about it because it's a twenty years down the road. But the reality is, it takes two or three years to even start <coughs> implementing stop signs. Well, and and the thing about that is, you're looking at um, <clears throat> just since uh, uh, 2019. You, we can take Cleveland. Uh, for instance, I'm down here all the time. I see the growth. Um, a lot of these uh, these companies are seeing where's the best place to make their money. Mm -hmm. And this is a growth area. Uh, it's right outside Chattanooga, um, and uh, it's it's a good it's a it's a good place to live. You know, you're right here where the Smoky Mountains are. Got the river. You've got, got the, the interstate, and you've got what's Bar Dam. You know, not too far away. Three high speed. Uh, what is this? These factories have to have a, two or three sources of high power in case one goes out, right? Isn't yeah. that one of their requirements? Yes. That they yes. Just and even even such, uh, uh, even Cleveland is building up your infrastructure on your fiber optics, uh, you know, and stuff like that. People don't think about um, a lot of these companies now do their business through fiber optics credit cards. Uh, they, um, mm -hmm. you know, these these companies, a lot, a lot of people don't carry cash anymore like they used to. So they use credit cards. And you've got to have some very good high-speed internet to uh, to absorb that. And uh, TVA did did put a, a blueprint for all the municipalities uh, back a while back. But uh, it's still, there's still a lot of things that needs to be grown. And that's one thing that even the city of Athens were looking at. How does the cities afford it? That's that's the problem. Is is do they reappropriate funds or they have to add funds? That's always a question. Well, right? here's the thing about it: is is you've got to start building your infrastructure from from let's say your substation. So uh, so build these these infrastructures. You've got to invest, um, whether it be uh, Cleveland Utilities or Athens Utilities. We've got we have. X amount of funds sitting over here that 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 is uh, been made. Uh, that's how you appropriate and you and you can build it slow. But then again, sometimes it's it's a lot better to uh, to go ahead and and bite the bullet and and spend some money uh, because you're not going to make the money if you don't spend it. Chattanooga, uh, the uh, the utility board of Chattanooga took over the fiber optics. They're doing a they're doing a very jam up job. With that, with that, wonder how much they'd have to raise taxes to do all the property taxes to do all the infrastructure needed. I don't guess we'd want to figure that up, do we? I don't even want to say anything because I mean, really, I mean, there's a lot of infrastructure that can be done um, that's going to help the growth. But then again, you know, you can you can have a million, 10 million, 100 million. I mean, where's it end? 
that's where the reason why you need a, a good positive plan. Mm -hmm. You know, these some of these cities like Etowah, or not Etowah, yeah, Etowah and Charleston, they have sewer. I guess it was put in place years and years ago. Yes. Does Niota have sewer? Uh, yes, Niota, Niota has a, a sewage plant up there too, yes. Can you imagine a town like that? What what got them sewer? Was it at one time a real busy place or? No, it was a federal federal programs that, that brought some of this stuff in, uh, especially uh, during the Great Deal and stuff like that. Um, you know, after the, uh, uh, during the, uh, right after the World War II and before, uh, there's a lot of things building the infrastructures of, of the cities. But you're looking at uh, Niota, if you take that for grant, there's, uh, the way I understand, there, I think there's 500 more uh, DR Horton homes coming in. So you've got... Uh, That's what I heard that. I heard, heard you, that. You've got sewage, you've got water, and you've got, you've got uh, gas, you've got electrical. Um, electrical is a little bit easier than the mm -hmm. other ones, but you, you've you Sewer is the hard one, isn't it? Sewer is the hard one, yes. But if you have sewer, they will come. Well, I mean, two things in the world. You've got to have something. You've got to have electricity to turn your lights on, and you've got to have water to flush your... Everything else you can... Yeah. If you had to rely on septic tanks, there wouldn't... Nothing would happen around here, would it? It would be a lot harder because of the uh, of the economical growth of the residential area. And the lots would have to be so much bigger. Yes. And you'd have to get it soil mapped, and those guys are too busy. Yes. Well, if you're just going to get into business right now, that'd be what you'd get into, wouldn't it, soil mapping? It would be... There's only uh, like two of them. It'd be very uh, it'd be very lucrative, I guess you could say. Yeah. Be like an appraiser or something. Yes. You know, it's something that you get into that... And well, there'll be one day when everybody's doing it, probably. Yes. Do you think they'll ever come up with something besides where we don't need sewer? The only thing I could think of is probably maybe a uh, combustive system. Uh, but I, you I mean, don't burn know. it, burn it. That's, I hadn't thought of that. That's the only thing I can I can really comprehend. Then you'd have to have a gas line to then it all you'd the have time. To have, yes, there's different. I guess you could burn it with a light, but then then somebody'd say the fumes were bad. Yeah. But if they could solve that, wouldn't that help all the the small cities with their sewer costs and everything? That to me, that would be a big one. That's a that's a that's a major task. It's it's it is a big major task that a lot of uh, a lot of people don't a lot of people don't see these things. Mm -hmm. They 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 go to the work and they work it all day long, but they don't see the logistics of everything mm -hmm. that that they. When they walk into their house, they've got water, they've got heat, they've got electricity, lights, so they can see. A lot of people don't understand the logistics of everything. Well, you've been gone, the electric, the heat and air unit's been keeping it at a constant temperature. Yes. Yep. And and, and people don't, it, they're accustomed to it. They're, they're not aware of, well, you know, we have to have electrical to turn that mm -hmm. You know, and now heat, We, if you have gas heat, you've got to have gas in there. Mm -hmm. Well, the gas has got to come from somewhere. It's got to be pumped, you know. It's got to be tested. It's, yes, and plus it's got to have that chemical in it so that if, if there That's is right. a leak, there's got to be a smell in mm -hmm. so you can smell it. There's a lot of logistics that goes on that, that the average citizen does not have a clue. I wonder if it's like that in other businesses that we're not familiar with. You know, we go into a place of business and we say, well, why can't you hurry up? And they probably have stuff behind the scenes they have to do too, I guess. Well, that's any business you go into. <clears throat> I actually, uh, there was one time that, that this waitress, she was came to my table, me and my wife, and she was in tears because the food wasn't coming out right for another table and they were giving her a real hard time yeah. and and i and i told her i said i said don't worry about it i said you know but people don't understand that maybe um maybe there there was some issues yeah but uh people was getting to the point now they want everything here and now instead of uh, looking at the logistics of, of how hard it is to get these things now i'm a pretty good customer now that i'm a in my own business aren't you 
I mean, I'm a pretty flexible customer. I am. I uh, I sit back now and and I analyze how harsh some people are to uh, to some of the um, to people that that deals with the general public, mm -hmm. and it, and it really bothers me sometimes. And I've made a few jokes, sure, that uh, and try to lighten the the uh, the mood up. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I need to be saying this, but. One of the biggest jokes, I say, I'll, I'll tell the waitress or the uh, the person, the cashier, I say, you know what's wrong with that person? They know how to get a bowel movement. <laughs> so, you know, and it kind of breaks the emotion. Uh, that, that? that was a Chris Rock joke, I think. <laughs> yeah, and, and you think about it, you know, people, people are just too, uh, they have been taught that they, they can get something right here and right now instead of taking a deep breath and and uh and just enjoying the minute there may be somebody there that uh, uh when i went and got my uh, drink today mm -hmm. you know i sit down and talk to somebody and you don't know what kind of positive influence you can have on somebody's life by just talking to them mm -hmm. and uh, you don't know what kind of uh, bad day they've had and just being a positive influence in somebody's life just right then and right there, whether it be at the gas station mm -hmm. or anything, you don't know. And the opposite is true too. If you don't, you can really you can really mess their whole day up. I seen that with those wait that waitress I was just mm -hmm. telling you about. I mean, you know, she had to go home, and she's probably got two distraught. kids at home. Got two kids, yeah. and, and and that's what's more bothersome than anything is. You know, the, she's trying to make uh, ends meet and trying to make a job to, to do everything she can. And and, um, and she gets <coughs> put down because the, the cook maybe didn't cook it on, on time. Yeah. And, it, and maybe he did. They're just being too, too ridiculous. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't like for people to put down the work, the person that the working class. I just, to me, I don't even like the phrase the working class. We're all working class. But... It really bothers me too. You know what? Real it, it does bother me totally. Um, you know, I, I look back. I've got some. When I was fifteen years old, I made three dollars and forty five cents an hour at Big M Grocery Store. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, bag boy at their the, at a little mom and pop grocery mm -hmm. store, and I still have. I had a ninety four year old lady come up to me the other day and say, "Hey, I remember you." <laughs> Uh, he was my bag boy at Big M. Still remembers me. Isn't that, I was a bag boy too. Our people, <laughs> people still remember me as their bag boy. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking that I was their bag boy. I was just the bag boy. But <laughs> they saw it more personal, I guess. But you know, a positive influence you have on a person's life will stick forever. And, and you know, there's there's a few times that that uh, um, that I've had people call me that was on the verge of doing something they shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. And just talking to them um, could change their life, a positive influence. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people just need to vent. They don't even really want your advice. They just want yeah. to vent, vent it out. That's true. That's absolutely true. And, you know, I've got big shoulders and <clears throat> I've been a punching bag all my life, so <laughs> I, it's okay with me. Are you going to keep going or retire? What's your plan there? Um, I do not know. I feel like I'm still 18 years old in a hundred man, a hundred year old body. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I uh, I love what I do. Um, I don't uh, get it all tired like they say. You're, they say in their 50s things start falling apart, which knock on wood. I hadn't noticed. I'm in better health in, now than I was in my fifth, my 40s. <laughs> I tell you what, I have to roll out of the bed now. <laughs> so, well, you sore in the morning? I'm sore in the mornings, but uh, but I work all the time. But I, I mean, remember being sore in my twenties and thirties too. That's not nothing new. Well, I mean, I uh, I wake up very early in the morning, take my dogs out, or my mm -hmm. wife does, and and uh, we we our kids are grown now, so it's just me, and my wife, mm -hmm. and my dogs, and my and one cat. Oh. Cat always wakes us up. <laughs> Uh, he know he's he's better than any. Boy, time. they're on time, aren't any, they? Any alarm clock, he's he's twenty yeah, times better than yeah. any alarm clock. But but then uh, I go to work and and I feel obligated to the employees of of our company. Me and Mike McCaskill has done a great job with this mm -hmm. and built it from uh, from nothing. But uh, 
I see all the people that I have in I have uh, in my life that I have I have to give them work. If I do not give them work, they don't work, and uh, they don't feed their family. So I feel obligated. I feel very obligated to uh, to do what I can do, uh, and I know Mike does too, uh, to make sure that that we run a company uh, efficiently and uh, uh, morally right. So if you had tons of money, you'd still feel obligated either to keep going like you're going. I guess there's got to be some stopping point, but yeah, it it it, it wears on you sometimes, but. Um, but the obligation, and it, it makes you feel good that mm. that I can help not only my employees, but the customers. I mean, two weeks ago, I was, they flew me to Chicago to look at a electrical problem that they had in Chicago. <laughs> and, and for me to be able to have, uh, be trusted to that point mm. is amazing. Um, not too long ago, uh, one of the, the, the funniest stories I've got uh, was <clears throat> I was asked to fly to Burbank, California. Couldn't figure out why a gear, a 13,000 volt gear was not lining up. So they flew me to Burbank, California, Hollywood, uh, mm -hmm. Burbank, Cal uh, and uh, I walked into the, uh, to where the gear was, and I said, oh, there's your problem. And I said, took a dumb redneck from East Tennessee <laughs> to figure out this problem. They stuck a board underneath one part of the, the gear to get uh. their fork trucks out. Uh. <laughs> and uh, so they flew me all the way over to Burbank. I stayed there a couple of days to sightsee and I seen enough of it. That's where Johnny Carson was from, wasn't it? He was always the, Burbank, California. Yes, and I walked the uh, the the stars, you oh. know, the, the walk of stars, mm. Hall of Fame of stars mm. and and uh, it, it was very eye opening to me. Um, what what I hope that we prevent from this area. How long ago was it when you went? It was uh, 2018. It was 2018. Was it starting to get a lot of homeless there then? I actually Ubered the whole time because I did not want to drive because yeah. there was so many tents in that area. Is that right? Would I be shocked? That, I, way, that was then. There is no way you wouldn't be shocked. It would absolutely blow your mind because I didn't, I, I seen a little bit on the news but but the news keeps it hush hush. Mm. But it was extremely bad. And that was then. I think it's supposed to be worse now. Yes, yes. Well, people living in tents. I just can't imagine. Can you imagine having kids living in a tent? I guess they don't have kids. Well, a lot of them don't, and they give them now. <clears throat> these the these people are giving them um, needles mm. and everything else. And yep. They're they're actually uh, getting free food. Uh, and and it, it's it's sad. What I seen out there is is not people don't have the moral ethics that that, that used to be. I wonder if we all just got a tent and started staying at it. If if we said okay, if we can't beat you, we're just going to join you. Just well, all get a tent for about two months. <laughs> I thought I thought <laughs> the same thing, but but looking back, I'm thinking you know if we all did that, uh, our economy would crash. It would be so so detrimental to our country. Do you think back in the when they had the back in the after the depression when they'd have a, you know people driving around to help pick cotton or or help on farms or something or paint houses that were living in the trucks were they were they they were considered homeless too, but where were they staying? They didn't even have tents. <clears throat> no, but I think that they would, you know, like my guys will go out of town. We'll we'll, we'll make sure their accommodations are right. But, but back then they didn't have but, any money when they were, you know, throwing beans off the railroads. Maybe it, maybe there just wasn't as many people around here. I don't know. Well, there wasn't there wasn't that many people around at that point in time. Now we've got. Uh, I guess they could just stop on the side. Of, you see these old pictures where they're. They're traveling, they stop on the side of the road and they're eating lunch. Yes. I guess that was, do you ever have to do that? I've done it quite a bit. Uh, you know, we, we traveled quite a bit. Yes, I, I have stopped and, and uh, took a nap in my truck or whatever, you know. And, uh, did you ever go to Lake Winnipesoka and you had to <laughs> eat in the car while everybody else was at the, re at the restaurant there? I, I remember that thinking, I think that just impressed upon me that you got to work. 
<laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, Lake Wivasoka, we used to, my mom and dad had an old golden station wagon. Uh -huh. <laughs> we we took it down there, and my dad had a cooler, and we'd sit out and eat our bologna sandwiches. <laughs> yep, I remember those. That's <laughs> what, you, so you were just like, I was probably two doors. That was a big deal going to Lake Wivasoka. That was yes. like, what, twice a year or something? Yep. Uh, I think uh, Mayfield Dairy Farms would take. My dad worked for Mayfield Dairy Farms, and he uh, they'd have a, uh, a once a year. Or once something. a year, we'd get to go down there. Yep, sure did. At Dolly, well, it used to be Silver Dollar City, but Dollywood now. Yeah, I remember I was in East Ridge here about three years ago, and I got turned around, and I ended up at the gate of Lake Winnipesoka, and I hadn't been there since I was a kid, so. I just went in, got a ticket, and walked around, and it, it was not as big as it, I remember it was. Lord, I went in. I, we we used to go there and feed popcorn to those uh, yeah, carp. To the, yeah, to the carp. Yeah. Wasn't there ducks or just carps? There's a lot of carp. No, those there. red, those uh, orange, wasn't it the orange fish? It was the big old Go carp. Fish. And they, the, the ducks would fight the carp yeah. over the, uh, the yeah. popcorn. <laughs> and you got the old. popcorn to feed it to them. Yep, sure did. Boy, that was a good old days. <laughs> it really was. You couldn't win any of those things, could nope. you? Nope. You know those little things where you throw the ring and it hits on the bottle? Oh, yes. So I took my son there uh, and uh, when he was probably six, and he walked up, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll let him. I said, now, D, you can't, you can't win these things. I'm just going to show you you can't win. And he picked up the first ring and threw it, and it went right on top of it. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen that happen. It was just luck. Well, I never could hit one. <laughs> I never could hit one. <laughs> so did you, now, before you got here, you sent me a video of, of you releasing a hawk. Was that what it was, or an eagle? No, that was a hawk. I called an eagle uh, last week. That hawk that, that I just released was, uh, I called it three months ago. A lady called and said it was in her yard. And when I went over there, it had a foot trap on it. Why did she call you? Um, I've, I've, I put a lot of stuff on social media to, to educate people on where to take them. You know, hawks and owls, uh, you know, if you've got an injured one. Here's what you can do, but people just call me, <laughs> and and uh, wildlife is all, always amaze me. And I try to help. TWRA is, you know, they're doing a great job, mm -hmm. and TWRA uh, doesn't. Uh, they need more manpower, which they can't get manpower, mm -hmm. and and helping them out every now and then uh, means a lot. But um, Anytime there's a, a hawk or an owl or something like that, first thing you do is call TWRA, tell them what you're doing, where you're going to take uh, um, the injured uh, bird of prey. Why do you have to call them? Well, all the birds of prey are protected. And all of them? State yes, of Tennessee? State, or? And well, it's federal and state of Tennessee. But, so uh, a bird of prey. <clears throat> bird of prey. So, and there's uh, there's only two rehab centers in this area. Uh, one of them is Alex Parks, which is in Signal Mountain, and she's Happy Nest Raptors. Uh, does a great job. In fact, that's who was with me today. She brought the hawk back up. How to many me. does she have there? Uh, I don't know exactly, but she has got an awesome facility, and she's a lady that. Uh, and I make a joke every now and then. That's the only lady my wife lets me go see. <laughs> she is just such a amazing lady. She can look at a, a bird of prey and and uh, and and get it back to health. The one hawk that we had um, actually uh, had a foot trap on it. It had one of its talons, its front talons, and uh, <clears throat> and it cut the circulation off to the point that it was going to rot off. So the vet that she uses, and they, they did a good job on it, they actually amputated that one talent. And, uh, and it had to stay there for a couple, a couple months, three months to heal before they could release it. And we released it back, basically back in the same area that it was, uh, that it was in. Did they, what, now around here it's what, mostly red tail hawks, is that right? There's a lot, there's, I did not know there was so many different type of hawks. Uh, and uh, there's Cooper hawks, there's uh, red tails, there's there's some hawks that actually migrate during the winter time down to South America and they migrate back. Mm -hmm. And I did not know any of this mm -hmm. stuff. With you know, yeah. and Alex has been a very good help for me to understanding of uh, the proper care and 
and when I do capture one, um, how to handle it till she till I can get it to her. Um, but uh, that one hawk, uh, they amputated his its front talon, and uh, they um, they kept it in the uh, flight pen and made sure it healed up. She was pretty aggressive today to me. She didn't really like me too much, but... Uh, what is how she got her foot caught in a trap? What kind of trap? <clears throat> it's a foot trap. It's a, you know, like a, uh, like a, they catch with coyotes and stuff like that. I don't, you know, there's different things that I have been told that um, some people put those foot traps up to catch hawks and owls uh, because they've got, uh, they have chickens or something mm. like that. No. Uh, free ranging chickens, and they'll put some baits up to catch on. So a hawk will get a chicken. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, usually a, a rooster can fend it uh, pretty heavy. But uh, uh, they're uh, they're birds of prey. They're they're there looking for food, and uh, most of the time it's the young chicks or something like that that gets ate. But um, People put people do put things out like that. So it had it was still flying, trying to fly with that trap on. <clears throat> it it looked like it had been flying for about a week, and it was just it was so worn out from trying to fly because that heavy weight. Was Boy, on yeah, it. it'd be like this big, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was easy. It was easy catch, but she didn't really like me too much. <laughs> but and as soon as I got her, I took her to uh, Alex, and uh, she took her to the vet, and they uh, uh, they did they did amputation on that, and. Healed it up and and uh, waited for a few months till it healed up completely, and we got to release it today. So, so do, do you have to call TWA every time you find one? I do because Just, I think it's I think the TWRA uh, needs to needs to know uh, for educational purposes of what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, where where this and let them know goes. you're not the one that set the trap out, or because <laughs> if they're protected. Yes. So and you can't just shoot one with a twenty two or a shotgun? No, no, and a lot of people has done that. What's you know, the crime? What's the punishment? I don't know what the punishment is for a uh, an owl. I would say it's probably over $1,000. I do know an eagle is $100,000. $100,000? Yes, I do know that. Because that's the... Because that was the, the last week when I caught the eagle, that was uh, one of the things they had, they had told me, that it was, uh, was a $100,000 fine if anybody... Is caught shooting. Golly. Yep. Why do they protect them? Because there's not many of them or something? <clears throat> well, you know, growing up, we never had any eagles here. Never had any eagles here. I remember that. And uh, I actually, I've seen eagles here, but not in my county, until uh, about a week before I caught the uh, the one eagle. Uh, it actually almost landed on the uh, the bridge between uh, Calhoun and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, out in Charleston. Mm -hmm. it, I, I almost landed in front of it. That was the first eagle I ever seen in McMinn County. And uh, and then um, everybody that follows me on, on, on social media knows that I try to help any way I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> it's something you don't keep. <laughs> you don't just go and get, get a hawk and you keep it. As soon as I get them, I've already got, uh, I've, already, I've already contacted Alex, the rehab, or or uh, Miss Lisa up, uh, <clears throat> up above Knoxville, let them know what we got and when I can bring the uh, the the bird down there. Do they do this voluntarily? Yes, they're. They a don't get paid for it or nothing. No, they are five hundred one Cs, and I try my mm. best to help them uh, to with some fundraising, and and that's one thing that uh, that I always try to do is um, is help them with fundraising because. That vet bill was expensive to amputate that leg. They oh, could have yeah. went ahead and put it down. Uh, the eagle, uh, the eagle is going to be non-releasable. So uh, Miss Lisa, that's uh, e uh, she's a certified eagle rehabber. Um, she needs funds, and and that's one of the things we need to do is make sure that uh, that we can help them out in any way, form, or fashion. How would she get funds? Uh, <clears throat> through the five hundred one C, like. Uh, uh, Miss Alex from Happy Nest, they have a Venmo that you can scan and. and but who who would who would how would would is there that many people that want to help that? There's there's quite a few people that that, that do help it, and it's 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 a good it's a good feeling to to make sure because 
We do not have any facility in this area other than Signal Mountain, which from my house is an hour drive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's on top of the Signal Mountain. And the other one is above Knoxville. And that's the only two rehab centers we got. And then Little Ponderosa in Clinton, Tennessee, which is about 50 minutes from me, mm -hmm. where I take um, baby possums, uh, baby skunks. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I actually took a baby mink up there one time. Um, they're real good. Uh, that's another place. Uh, now that's a little zoo. I bet. In Clinton, and you can go up there and feed the deer and feed the uh, the goats. And the Is cows. it a big? How many? They got like fifty acres or two thousand. I don't know how many. They, they're not that big of a of a place. But ninety eight percent of all their animals or rehab animals are are from from the wild. So they they actually, uh, if I take some possums up there, baby possums. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll raise them until it's time to release them and release them back to the wild. They do a great job. All all of those facilities do a great job. How do what do they keep a hawk in? They they keep it uh, depending on how bad it is. Mm -hmm. If it's like the one that that I had had, they first keep it in a, a kennel that's big enough for it, so they don't want it running around yeah. and everything else. When it gets strong enough, they put it in a flight pen. And the flight pen probably uh, around 50 foot long. It's probably uh, 25 foot high. Uh, That's pretty significant. Yeah, isn't it? it's 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 so they like they, a bull like a pitcher's bullpen or something. Yes, basically that batting batting cage. Yes, and and they've got and they have um, like the eagle today. The eagle, um, she's I think 22 minutes from the uh, hatchery and all of the dead trout that they have the the. the uh, they give them to her to feed the eagle now. When you released it, did it take off like it was escaping? Or <laughs> it took it took off. It went it went low and then it went up into a tree for about two or three minutes. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I've got I have a video of it. And then it flew off and it starts circling, going higher and higher. Where well, there was another hawk that went above it, and it was a male hawk because uh, Miss Alex said it was a smaller hawk and. It actually dove down to her, and she turned upside down, and with her talons, mm. went to grab the hawk, and uh, and that was the first time that I had ever seen anything like that. Mm. It's pretty cool. Mm. It was it was amazing. It was an amazing uh, thing to see today. Is there any birds that have gone extinct that you know of recently? <laughs> I don't know of any that went extinct. Uh, recently, uh, now there probably is, but uh, nothing in 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 um, uh, America that I know of is at, the, at this point. Now, what what is it that circles dead animals? Is that a buzzard? Is that <coughs> that's a, a vulture? That a... That's a vulture. Uh, they 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 do have some black <laughs> vultures right now. So a, a vulture is it strict? Is it's not a hawk or is that's a whole nother animal? That's a vulture. whole new animal, and they actually will uh, they eat dead things, and they're very good to have. But a lot of the farmers, um, uh, newborn calves, uh, they're they're very aggressive, and they'll they'll eat a baby calf, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that <clears throat> that uh, uh, you know the farmers do not like them. Mm -hmm. So. I guess a good reason for that. Maybe. I did. I did uh, I capture one uh, one vulture and took it down to Miss Alex. I, I do have a video of it. I released it in the same place. Once I released it, its family came back to it. Golly! It was absolutely the most amazing thing <clears throat> that that I've seen. The family still remembered it, and it, they they came around and started flying around with it. I've got some great videos of that one too. Now, how would they recognize it? I <clears throat> sound. Uh, I, I would. I smell would maybe. The sound, I don't maybe know. Maybe smell. I, I, you know, that's that's something for the experts. But um, it it absolutely amazed me. Well, the first hawk <clears throat> that I ever caught was over the landfill in McMinn County. I had been hit by a car. And I took it to Miss Alex, and um, they had brought it back uh, a couple months later, the same place we released it. <clears throat> and when we released it, its mate came back. They mate for life. They mate for life, and that hawk did. And its mate came back and flew off with it. They don't have divorce. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have divorce like we do, no. <laughs> and they will not find another mate for over a year. Um, 
if uh, the bait dies. I mean like a grievance period or something? Uh, they, well, they wait that long to make sure that, I guess, that, yeah. that their, their mate's going to come back. What about the crow? Some say the crow is one of the smartest birds, animals. <clears throat> well, <laughs> every, every night I usually feed my deer in my front yard and they come up at nighttime and then during the daytime my crows come. Well, a natural deterrent for the hawks is a crow. So a lot, I'm trying to explain to a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the chicken farmers that feed the crow and they run the hawks off. It's a natural deterrent. You don't have to shoot them. It's, Will a crow beat up a hawk? Oh yes, they'll chase them off. Yes. They, You'd think a hawk would, could, beat a, could beat up a crow, <clears throat> wouldn't you? They, if they ever got their talons on them, yeah, they could, but, uh, but crows are very, very fast and, and very Maybe they smart. stick together, too. Yeah, they're very smart, and they, they know how to attack. They know how to attack a crow, I mean, an eagle, mm. a hawk. Uh, of course, owls are at nighttime, but they, they know how to run them off. It's, it, it's, it's, it's cool to watch how nature takes care of itself. It's unbelievable, yes. it? the stuff that you just learn. All of God's creations, and... and uh, I, uh, I do honeybees, and, and, and it's, it's amazing to me, uh, these creations. Have you, heard, uh, have you heard all that folklore on when you see certain birds and what it means? Yes. Have you ever studied any of that a little bit? <clears throat> the red cardinal, you know, that is... It's, that's uh, someone who's recently died. Yep. And, boy, I tell you what, it never fails. I'll see a red cardinal after somebody... And I don't know if it's coincidence or what. My uh, when my uh, my mom, <coughs> excuse me when my uh, wife's dad passed away, mm -hmm. there was a red cardinal stayed at the house. Oh, he stayed there. Stayed there. Well, he, you know he would he would fly around. Yeah. But he he stayed there for for a couple of weeks. What I found is they'll they'll run across my path, wherever I'm going yes. or driving or riding a bike or something. They'll they'll pat they'll pat not look at me. They just run. But you don't see them on normal no. occasions. No. It's only after someone that's close to you has passed away. It's the it's amazing. It's amazing uh, uh, feat. It I, is. I wonder. I've not. I've studied some of the others, but I forget what they are. But there's several other folklore related to birds. We were we were out there after we <clears throat> released a. Um, uh, the, the hawk today, mm -hmm. and there was a, a bird I had never seen before, and it was a it was a cow bird, huh. and had the sweetest song. And and of course, Alex has this app that you can listen to the song. Oh, is that it, right? It tells you what kind of bird mm -hmm. it is. That's the first time I ever seen one. And they said that a lot of people don't like them because they lay they'll go find. <laughs> They'll go find a nest and lay their eggs in the nest and let somebody else take care of their Oh, it's <laughs> like a loafer or something. Yeah, yeah. Remember that cartoon, The Chicken Hawk? Or yes. The chi or was it <laughs> The Chicken Hawk or The Chicken and the Hawk? What the Chicken it? and the Hawk, I think it was, yeah. yeah. And he'd always act like he wasn't doing anything until he needed to, and then he always had a plan. Yep, sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't realize, I didn't realize all that stuff when I watched that cartoon, but those were true characters to... To the cartoon. Yep, sure was. Yes. Now bees. So you do you still raise bees? I do a lot of bee extractions. I uh, uh, that's one thing that I. You love. raise them yourself? Yes, yes. I've got I've got a lot of hives. How many hives? I've got twenty hives right now, and um, and I actually was in them yesterday. I was looking at them, and they are bringing in a ton of pollen. Right do you now. keep? How close to your house do you keep them? They're probably about 100 yards. You can keep them up to your house. It's it's not it's not the point of uh, I can actually stick my thing. I can actually open up the hives without you know without a suit on. Some of them now. There's two or three of them that that I put a suit on because their demeanor is a little different. But uh, you mean the whole hive is demeanor is different? Yes. Yeah. Well, they're a little bit more aggressive. The other I wonder, ones, I, but the same the same breed of honeybee. <clears throat> well, it could be uh, a lot of a lot of mine are uh, are uh, all of mine are bees that I have extracted uh, from houses from uh, swarms. This time of year uh, is swarm season, so 
the bees will actually, uh, they'll actually say, okay, here's some scout bees. And they'll fly these scout bees out trying to find a new home for the queen. And they come back and say, hey, we found this new condo at your house, okay? Mm -hmm. And they'll put the queen on a diet uh, so she can fly. She's too fat to fly right now. So they put her on a diet. In the meantime, uh, she'll lay some queen cells, and they'll put royal jelly in it, and it, it looks like a peanut inside of, uh, inside of the, uh, the hive. And then once it gets sealed, they, they take a vote and say, hey, I'm going with the old queen. And a quarter to half of the, the bees that will fly with her to the new home. And you'll see these balls of bees, mm -hmm. and that's a swarm. And they're actually, the queen has not exercised like these other ones have all year, and she has to rest. So she rests on a tree limb, and it makes a ball. And they sit there and rest until it's time for them to. So they're they're not staying there. If, if you don't if no. you don't move them, they'll they'll leave on their own. They're gonna leave on their own because yeah. they're not going to a tree limb. That's they're true. going to an attic vent. So they're going yeah they're going to a hole in a wall mm -hmm. or at top uh, of a barn or something. Of, yeah, somewhere that, that's concealed where they can protect uh, protect the. Hive. Wonder how they know which ones are going with her. They vote. The, it's it's a. It is one of, to me, looking at a honeybee, there's no way a person can say that there's not a God because how they work with each other, it, it's amazing. There's no way that, that they're thinking as soon as they get out, mm -hmm. as, soon as, they, as soon as they hatch out of their, their little cocoon, they're... They're already working. They know what they're. They know what to do. They know their role. They know every role, and it is the most amazing thing. And every time I go into uh, to these bees, it, it it's amazing. And then when I go into houses and remove them from houses or remove them from uh, a log that they were cutting up or mm -hmm. whatever, and I actually get to see inside and see what what they've done and how they made the honey. Here's the thing about it is honey, when it's capped, it's got a percentage of moisture in it, okay? That percentage of moisture, you, you'll have uncapped honey, which is not, not really good because it's high moisture content. When it gets to a certain level of moisture content, they cap it. What do you mean cap it? You mean that... The, they, they, seal, they seal that little bitty hole. Like they, with a honey wax With or wax, something. yeah. They've got a wax gland, mm. and they actually cover that up then you know that's when we get the honey and we we put are it. we stealing it from what do they what do they do with the honey and we still we steal the honey they, the honey's for them to eat they're storing it for the winter that's okay so if we take it are they going to starve yes they will it, so what i usually do whilst uh, during may i will steal the honey but I'll, I'll give them some boost, some food, and but they'll rebuild it. But if I rob them again in uh, August or so, I leave two or three frames of honey in there. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'll feed them. Mm -hmm. And because during Darth season, which there's low nectar and low pollen, uh, that's uh, usually in uh, August, September, there's no pollen and nectar. It's really the hot time of the year. So everything's just dried out. Dried out. Late August. That's when we start feeding them. Yes. It's a, it's a neat, uh, it's a neat uh, thing to do. So these are all honeybees? Yes. But you're saying different colonies will have a different type of personality in a way? Yes, some of them will, yes. Oh, I guess related to the queen they're with? That's right. The genes in the queen, yes. The, the queen and also... The male bees that breed with with the queen, the genes from from the uh, she's from wore the out, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, when when she flies off and the queen cells hatch, mm -hmm. now you'll have one go around killing the other queen, so there won't be one queen. She'll do a maiden voyage, and the drones, which is a male, will breed with her. They die as soon as they breed. They die. She comes back and stores the uh, the uh, the sperm with inside her, and she'll lay one to two thousand eggs a day, and and uh, all male or female? 
No, uh, all, I got, oh. all bees are female, but during this time of year, they will lay drone cells. Boy, drone now wait, you, you've lost me. So <laughs> all, all, uh, all bees, <clears throat> all bees are female. Okay. Where do they get the males? The the uh, the queen will lay male eggs this time of year. Okay, mm -hmm. this is breeding season. Mm -hmm. So they'll lay male eggs this time of year. The male eggs are fat. They don't have a stinger. They're fat, and all they want to do is fly around, eat all the food, and find a virgin queen. Mm -hmm. That's all they want to do. So <clears throat> at the end of the season, if there's any, any, uh, any males left, they don't hatch anymore. They, they die out or they run them out of the, of the hive. In the wintertime, it's all females, and she keeps on producing eggs. So the male, the male uh, bee is just for procreation. Yes, that is and, correct. And by the by, midsummer, they're all died out most of the time. Yes. So by by August, during the Darth season, it's just mostly female, Female. females everywhere. That's right, and and she's built the. Uh, the new queens, the queen will last, sometimes last up to five, six years. You know, now sometimes a queen will have something wrong with her mm -hmm. and uh, she'll, uh, she'll end up uh, dying the first year. And then they can actually make a uh, queen cell out of royal jelly. And, and, but there's got to be drones to breed with her. There's got Is to be that drones. where we get the, the name Drones nowadays, does it come from the bee lingo, maybe? I, it may be. I, Sounds I, I, like it. I do it? not know, but, but bees are very, very unique to study. Do they, uh, when you when you have these 20, what do you call them, condos? <laughs> well, I call the, the uh, well, what I said on the condos was, was when the queen is leaving the hive and these scout bees have found a new home, they're going to their new condo. But mm -hmm. we've got hives, and most of my hives are Will, you, will they come to yours, or do you bring those in? <clears throat> well, what I do is I will go in and look and see if there's any, any queen cells. Mm -hmm. If there's queen cells and the queen's still in there, I will actually, what they call, artificial uh, swarm them. I will put a box right beside that, take a few frames of bees with the queen and put her into a new box, leave the queen cells in that one box. I have artificially swarmed her, she won't swarm. And then I'll have two hives. Or I can actually take one or two of the, of the other uh, queen cells and put them in a smaller hive and I, I can have two or three hives. So when you when you put them in these boxes and you take them out to your to your place and do they make quite a bit of honey in each box? Oh yes, uh, you can have um, you can have from fifty to hundred pounds of honey on each one of them if you uh, if it's if it's a good season. Yes. Now when I sometimes I'm driving by places and they'll say local honey and so I pull in and get a jar. Sometimes it's a little darker, sometimes it's not. Do they water it down? No. <clears throat> the color depends on the pollen, uh, uh, the nectar. So some of the places real clear, that is, uh, that's basically um, comes from uh, nectar from the trees. And then you get like the clover. The clover, it will be a lot darker. It's, uh, it depends on the, the area and what's in that area for the bees to make. So, so if I'm, I guess the theory is that if you'll eat local honey, then the local honey, the bees have pollinated with the local things that create allergies and that helps, helps you <clears throat> Keep from getting sick, is that right? That's correct. There is one thing that everybody does need to know. <clears throat> um, local bee beekeepers, <clears throat> there is all natural, okay? All natural is not screened, okay? So when I take my frames of honey out and I cut them and I put them in a, uh, uh, I put them in a, a, a screener, it screens the impurities out, okay? Which I mean the wax, uh, some dirt or whatever, um, but it also will filter out some of the pollen, 
okay? So you've got to be careful and ask questions of how it's been filtered because they can actually filter all, a, a whole bunch of pollen out, which is not going to be good for you. You want that pollen because that pollen is what helps you out. So if it's filtered, it's probably just, you're not, you're just getting, you might as well go to here to the Publix and get it. <clears throat> you can, you'll have, you'll still have, see the filters I use is, uh, uh, I forgot the microns, uh, but it's not the real fine microns. I'm just taking the wax out and some of the um, impurities that maybe a piece of wood got in there yeah, or something like a that. a leaf or something. A leaf, yeah. So, um that is what you want. You want to make sure that the uh, the microns is not so fine that they're finding it, they're, they're they're taking out the pollen too, because that pollen is what is going to help your allergies. If you get it from the local, yes. What what would you consider local honey? Would it be if we're here? Would it be Lamontville Road or would it be the Hicks in Tennessee, or does it need to be Here, a mile and a half away? Here's the thing about it. local honey. We are in an area where the, we're going to have the same type of plants, uh, same type of trees, uh, whether it be in Athens, Tennessee, or in this area. Um, so that is local. Yes, that's that's local. Just now, Middle Tennessee is not local. You but know. Hickson would be. Yes, because it's the same sort of weather and. It's the weather, but you got to look at the uh, the plants and the trees. Mm -hmm. That's that's where your allergies is coming from. Uh, you know, that's. I wonder how that stops the allergies. Well, you get immune to it. It's no different than what we just talked about uh, like earlier when we didn't have uh, we didn't have um, air conditioners when we were were kids. We had our windows up. We were immune to all of this. Because, so it's just a matter of getting used to it, basically. Yeah, you get your body used to yeah, those. Used to fighting it. Yes. I take about a teaspoon of honey ever, ever summer in the mornings. I put it in my drink in the mornings. But uh, I don't usually start till after about mid-April. Is that about right, or, is it, or does it need to be all year? <clears throat> well, you know, you're, you're, you've got to go when the allergies, when the pollen start blooming. Which is when? Which is right now. You know, you look at Bradford pears. Mar you, you, so when you see a Bradford pears start blooming, you know it's, it's it's time to start taking your honey if regularly. Oh, yes. I, I looked in my beehives, and they are going crazy, and they're full of pollen right now. I mean, they are just... When you say pollen, you mean honey? No, pollen. Pollen. They they they've got on both sides. They'll have a oh, bunch of pollen and oh, their come arms in, or something. And they'll make uh, they'll make uh, bee patties out of that. The bee patties is what they eat too, and uh, the nectar is is most of the time the honey. And basically, honey is and I don't mean to be gross. Honey is bee throw up. Mm -hmm. I mean that's mm -hmm. the best way yeah. I can explain it. But then again, they are so particular with everything. It has to be a certain moisture content before they cap it. Once it's capped, you know it's it's good honey. So, so some of this honey you might get might not have been been capped. I would say ninety percent of it is. I you know I can't say that it is. Or what not. about some places where they used to they used to put part of the honeycomb in there? I don't see that anymore. Well. The the problem with that is a lot of them has got plastic comb now, and the plastic comb is easier to uh, to do than it is. Uh, in fact, this year I'm actually putting beeswax in to make those type of uh, honeycomb. A lot so, of people want honeycomb. So you're saying uh, that these bees actually have to make their comb first, I guess, don't yes. they? Yes, it takes longer. So if you give them an artificial cone, it'll give you... It gives you a boost, and they, they can produce... They've got the backside, and they've got the, 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 uh, they've got the, the mathematical you know, yeah. uh, hole diameter. Octagon or yeah. something. And, and, and that's, that's the reason why I'm saying if, if you look at a natural one and compare it to the one, it's, you'd be surprised at the mathematical geniuses these people, the, the, these bees are. The, these these creatures are absolutely... Because the honeycomb, they're all the exact same size. Exactly. Is that size. wax? Yes, that's wax. They've got a wax in their abdomen. 
and they uh, they they secrete that wax. You know, I I don't I remember people that used to chew on the cone. Yes. yes. What was the point of that? I bet that was your first chewing gum. <laughs> well, a lot of people just likes the taste of it, and uh, you you've got that honey taste, and and plus there's um, a propolis in it. Uh, the propolis is a uh, part of the bee wax, and propolis is good for uh, uh, infections, bacterial uh, infections. And you don't get that if you don't if you're not getting the comb, right? Or are you? <clears throat> Bought a lot. Well, you you. you <laughs> You don't get the propolis. The propolis, uh, they, one thing the bees do is they fill cracks in. They fill every little crack in they possibly can, and uh, they don't like cracks, and they fill it with propolis. And that propolis is a, uh, is a very anti-inflammatory, uh, uh, anti not anti-inflammatory, antibacterial uh, uh -huh. uh, mechanism. In fact, uh, back the old timers used to take the propolis and scrape it off, and it looks like plastic. I mean, a, a, a wax, it's just hard wax, and you can put it on sores and it would help the infections. They put it in cracks so to keep, uh, I guess, germs out of it, there. It, it's, they are absolutely clean, clean, but it, it's, it's amazing. But these are honeybees. These are honeybees, yes. Yellow jackets, is that the same thing? No, nope, that's where we uh, we need skunks. Skunks eat yellow jackets. <laughs> we don't need What no about yellow. wasp? Uh, wasp is not, uh, not any. That's a that's a, a species that. But the honeybee is just he's not going to bother you if you don't bother him, right? No, they the ones that are that are flying around on flowers and everything else. I actually showed a lady the other day. I was sitting there petting one. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all they want to do is is work something us humans don't mm -hmm. like, work and take food back to their family. That's all they want to do. <clears throat> they want to be left mm -hmm. alone. They don't want to bother nobody. Mm -hmm. They just want to take food back to their hive to feed their family. Well, I'm looking at honeybees different now. <laughs> but I'm not going to worry so much about getting uh, local honey. I always, as long as it's within 25 miles, it's fine. Yeah, you just got to look at the trees and the uh, flowers and stuff like that. Around Do you think it. honey with the cone in it tastes different than honey without the cone in it? No, it doesn't. It's it's all the same. The wax uh, doesn't uh, give it a different taste. A lot of people likes the wax. The wax they like eating it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it, it's got a little bit of propolis in it. That uh, you have have some, wouldn't yeah, you? Yes, and a lot of people. Um, Pure cinnamon and pure honey uh, helps uh, stomach ailments. Honey uh, or cinnamon does, I know it makes yeah. you, calms my stomach down. Yeah, you can put uh, a teaspoon, uh, the old timers used to, I think it was a teaspoon of honey and put cinnamon in it, mix it up and take it. Pure pure cinnamon, not you know artificial. But Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I always, yeah. I didn't know that for a while, that there was pure, yeah. pure cinnamon, because that other stuff's a fake or well, see, and honey is uh, is the only food that doesn't have a shelf life. You'll see some of the uh, the honey crystallize, mm -hmm. and all you have to do is put it in hot water, not boiling water, just hot water, and let it set, and it will go back. to Not it. put water in it. Just, no, just put it. Boil it like you would a baby bottle or yes, something. Yes, but don't don't <laughs> don't put it in real hot water. But it will it will actually go back to uh, to the honey state. They're they're actually. Uh, 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 archaeologists, archaeologists, I can't even talk, archaeologists, I can't, the, the ones over archaeologists, there, archaeologists yep. yes, can't say it, but uh, anyway, over in Egypt found some honey, and it was still in good shape to eat, um, and so, the teams, so that's, that's been, you know. I wonder how much sugar is in a teaspoon of honey, versus... Wonder what the dip is. It, is it real? What? I guess it's not it's, sugar. It's it's nectar. See, all of that's nectar. I heard somebody a while back said that they're they t said they ate honey instead of sugar, and and their doctor told them it's still sugar. But I don't think it is. I believe it's different. Yeah, it's the uh, everything that the, the. I mean, you're looking at. I mean, and I again, I don't want to be gross but that's bee throw up <laughs> i mean it you know they just don't go up on the sugar can't get it or they the nectar is 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 the biggest issue biggest thing but um it's i don't know uh, uh i never did any, do any research on the uh, sugar content or anything like that but i'm a diabetic and and 
the honey doesn't maybe bother. it's not really the same as sugar. the honey doesn't bother my uh, sugar levels as mm-hmm. as as sugar mm-hmm. does mm-hmm. A candy bar yeah candy bar will send you into orbit yeah it sure would <clears throat> did it make you sleepy no no it's just uh i watch it very carefully i i uh, i take pills i don't take a shot yeah but, yeah what about the ants or ants is you know Aren't ants supposed to be real smart too? <clears throat> ants another uh, creature that's very unique, uh, like the honeybee. You know, all they're doing is going out trying to find food for their families, and they're protect their hive. Now, fire ants I don't like, but 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 uh, the other ants, they're they're unique to uh, to study also. I guess all animals have their, you know, we're familiar with the honeybee and the ants a little bit, but. And the crow, but maybe even I would. You know, I was. Uh, I read an article the other day that said that cows and elephants, I believe it was, had a sense of humor. Have you ever heard that? I've heard that. Yes. I don't know how they would know that. Well, you look at everything around us. You look at a possum. Possum eats tons of ticks. I mean, they uh-huh. eat a ton of ticks. I, I've got a video somewhere where a deer had walked up to a possum and the possum was pulling the ticks off of it. Uh, but uh, they eat a lot of uh, uh, dead stuff. But what a lot of people don't understand, they eat poisonous snakes. Huh. They eat And don't bother them? And, and it doesn't bother them. Mm-hmm. Their blood content is doesn't bother them. Skunks. A lot of people don't like skunks. You know, they get in their chicken houses, eat their chick, you know, eat their uh, their their eggs, mm-hmm. or uh, they stink. Mm-hmm. But if you have yellow jackets, I guarantee you won't have them around if you have them too much. But they eat a lot of grubs. You know, we put poison uh, to kill all the grub worms around. Mm-hmm. You know, and the the best deterrent for grub worms is skunks. Um, you've got... Uh, and a skunk won't bother you. If it, no. it'll, it'll spray a dog if well, it's attacking it. And naturally, I mean, every every animal has a defense mechanism and for protection. You know, I I read some stuff about even plants have a protective toxin. Yes. Like, a, you know, like even broccoli or something that... Some claim that that might might not be so good for us if we're eating those toxins. But I hadn't can't get my head wrapped around that. But you've heard that too, right? I've heard. I've, I've definitely heard that. But there's everything that we have. Even venomous <clears throat> snakes has a role to play in our ecosystem. Mm-hmm. And what we're doing as humans is we're using poisons. We're poisoning rats. Well, the rats run off. An owl eats it, it gets poisoned. With the poison. And, and, and it kills an owl. Uh, or a hawk or an eagle. You know, uh, eagles back when me and you were younger, mm. we didn't see any. Why? Mm. Because of lead and, mm. and other things. You know, that's that's one of the things that, that uh, we were taught very early that why eagles were diminishing was because of the chemicals. Um, but uh, I think humans need to be a little bit more... Um, uh, waking up just three weeks ago <clears throat> three weeks ago I started an experiment with myself and I've got bottled uh, plastics I bring plastics and I start putting them in a, a tote and taking them to the uh, recycling thing in Athens Tennessee I noticed my my uh, my garbage is halfway full now and usually it's overrun because I've got all these plastics and by me just running by the recycling company uh, mm-hmm. uh, just twice a week, or, you know, I could do it once a week, is uh, is something that, that us humans don't even phantom, but we don't even look at our landfills. You know, I'm sure Cleveland is is filling up. It's got to be. And Every day but Sunday. We're going to have to do something uh, to, to eradicate some of this stuff for our economy. And how will we drink water? <laughs> Can you believe that when we were growing up, we would have never thought about buying a buying a water bottle? <laughs> That's true. That's true. You ever go, you ever go instead of getting it out of the sink, get it get a get a water bottle, and you think, boy, I'm stupid, just getting a water well, bottle. It's just habit or 
something. I it's, don't. It's it's a habit now. But the thing about it is, is when when I was growing up, when we would go to to uh, to church, there was two underground springs going to my church. It was a dirt road, mm -hmm. and my dad would always fill uh, stop there and fill up. I remember the days when they would. And and I went by those springs. They're still there. You, people don't know what they are now because mm -hmm. they're all grown up. Yeah. But uh, they're underground springs that was uh, pure water. And uh, but but now everything's. Got well, people everything. would be afraid to drink out of it now. They'd they'd want to test it and. But I doesn't doesn't it the springs that are underground doesn't it clean the water up too. Yes, Somehow. these things are like 98% uh, uh, pure. What well, makes you, them pure? When they go through the limestone and everything else, if you go up to, uh, where is that, uh, uh, the Lost Sea. The cave. The cave mean? up there. They've got the water coming out. It's 98% pure, and they've checked it out. It's It goes through a filtering. It goes through a natural filtering system. Limestone? Yeah, limestone whoa, whoa, and a few other ones. I wonder how it does that. That's one of God's creations that uh, that He has He has put all of these things in place for us, and we don't we don't take the time to uh, understand or even or care uh, in most sense. It's um, it, what are some of the other fascinating animals that you can think of? <sighs> of course, my dog. I love my dog. But they're they're not. They couldn't make it in the wild, hardly, could they? They couldn't now because they're so domesticated. <clears throat> um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm really elephants. I, I'm really intrigued with elephants, how, how they're, uh, they're family oriented. Uh, apes, uh, gorillas, stuff like that. What is it they say you don't know where elephants go to die? Is that, no, elephants have a memory? Yeah. How yeah. do they know that? It's just, it, it, to me... I've heard that my whole life. Yes. And uh, they're very... Uh, they protect the family. And that's something that, that us humans have, have lost, mm -hmm. is our family uh, sense of uh, pride of our family and, and keeping our families together. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad. Even extended families. You, you, you know, it's like my second cousin or my third cousin. Used to, that was... Pretty significant. Now it's just I. They're just my cousin. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. It, you just don't. You, it's not like it was when we were growing up. We used to, mom, it, the the church would come over to the house mm -hmm. and they'd be underneath the shade tree <coughs> stringing beans. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, one thing I hate I hate tomatoes. The reason why I hate tomatoes, they can tomatoes, mm -hmm. and I just. You know, it smell, you know, I just, <laughs> Lord, I mean, there's a lot of things that, but it was all, everybody helped everybody, mm -hmm. everybody helped everybody. And yeah, you had a little few disagreements, but my gracious, now these days, people just, mm -hmm. they've gotten away from God too much, in my opinion. Do you think the honeybees, wasn't there a, a when they a scare about the honeybees, we're going extinct. Was that a, a myth? Or? <clears throat> no, in 2017, the uh, the honeybees were put on uh, endangered in the state of Tennessee. Um, exterminators cannot, cannot, uh, if they see a honeybee hive in a house, they cannot do anything. They can't even spray around that area. What what they got to do? They've got to call somebody to uh, to exterminate them, like I, like me, or. Um, they have to have a special letter. The, the homeowner has to have a special letter to have the bees. Uh, Saying this is this is endangering our yeah. There, two there's kids no way something. we can remove yeah. them. You know, and and uh, the state has to give them a special letter. But the uh, but the the companies cannot still do it. They'd have to to have somebody else do it. Now, if we lost the honeybees, we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? Any type of pollinator that we lose, yes, we we would be in very very. It, it would be bad uh, because without pollination, uh, we won't live. <clears throat> the trees have to be pollinated. You know, the wind does a little bit of it, but uh, these pollinators. Uh, what, what exactly is pollination? Pollination. Basically, it's a uh, it, it, it's, it, 
gets a little bit more in depth than this, but I'll, I'll give you my redneck terms. Basically, the tree secretes this, um, um, I'm saying male and female, but it's the wrong terminology, okay? They, they secrete this, uh, this sweat, pollen. Sweat. This pollen. Right. And it has to get to another another tree, and it intergrades with that. And Why does it have to get to another tree? That's pollination. That's what that's what God is intended to a do. A pine tree. A pine tree. Uh, a pine tree has to have some of its sap, or some made. some of its stuff. You, you've got to. That's how instead of um, having a male and a female <clears throat> type <throat> of issue, <throat> you've got these pollination that does basically the same thing that helps the tree grow, help it, helps uh, a lot of organisms. There's a lot of things to pollination. Nate and helps nurture it, I guess? Yes. Is that why as people, a lot of times they'll plant two, two if they're gonna plant a tree, they'll plant two together? They'll plant two together, usually. And if you look uh, during, during the, um, uh, especially the pine trees during pollination, and you, you watch the wind or something like that, you can see a ton of pollen. Mm -hmm come off of it but uh but yeah everything's got to be pollinated and now men is trying to uh and have developed some of the corn species that don't have to be pollinated and we're putting things in our body that's that's altered that that'd be a m mgo what, yeah, or i can't remember the isn't term corn off. sort of been been changed since the since they came to America, was it first maize or something oh, like yes. that? Oh yes, oh yes. It was. They said the corn was like this big. Now it's well. Anything we've got now has been. You look at. <clears throat> well, let me let me explain to you about Grace the chicken that I had last year uh, in July. This lady called me and he had his chicken on the side of the road. It jumped out of the slaughter truck. A little one of them white chickens, and and she asked me if I could have it, so I took it home. I raised her, and I didn't think she'd last. You know, she'd last two or three days, mm -hmm. and and they're only four to five weeks old when they're taken to slaughter. When she died back back a few months ago, she was around twenty five pound. We have altered these chickens to grow fast, and you, you wouldn't believe how big she had got. And it wasn't that I was overfeeding her. Mm -hmm. It was just how they breed them and how they put things. It wonder. It makes us wonder what all we're doing to our body by by eating this. And what would you do? <clears throat> eat well, tomatoes and green beans out of the take your uh, take a cow to the slaughterhouse. Well, think about this. You know, you've got all these preservatives put in everything anymore. And back when we were kids, you didn't hear all this cancer stuff and all these other mm -hmm. issues that we have. Mm -hmm. Diabetes was not anything. You know, cancer, uh, there was one kid that had cancer at my school, but that's the only one we ever heard of. And and it makes you wonder if it was something else. You just we, can't. I just, Friday, I just went to the funeral of, uh, of one, of my, one of my buddies had lung and uh, liver cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, you never heard of the stuff like that. It's got to be something we're eating. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you can take an aspirin that big and it'll make your headache go away, just think what a green bean would do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, you go to the stores and, and you think about all of these uh, billions of people that's in, the, in this world, and we're taking away all this land for farmers. Uh, I forgot how many, 363,000 or something like that. I can't remember the exact numbers of farms <clears throat> lost last year. And we're still having these illegals come in at 12 billion. Mm -hmm. How are we going <clears throat> to feed all these people? That's that's some issues that, that people is not looking ahead and thinking about these things. Well, you can't hardly get your, if you start thinking about that, it'll really mess your mind up. 12 million people and there's what? They're all here. gonna be, they all gotta eat three times a day. Yes, yes. Well, you know, in Illinois, uh, uh, one judge stated that they can carry, they, they got the Second Amendment rights, so they can carry weapons now. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a, it's, a, it's a crazy world that I've seen. If you go to the farmer's market and get food there, you don't know if they've had a bunch of pesticides on it. 
that's something that... I mean, you, you know... Yeah. That's the reason why uh, going to the Amish, uh, the Amish... Uh, do they not use that? They don't use that, no. Which one do you go to? Uh, the one in Inglewood. I've never been to that one. Is it bigger than the one in Polk County? I don't know about that in Polk County. I've not been to that one. But uh, it, they're, they're real nice, but they, uh, uh, you know, they they make sure they, they uh, uh, their, their fruits and vegetables are fresh. Do they, do they start the tomatoes and some of that stuff in those... Plastic things. Uh, I don't think. I, I don't know. I don't know. But that surely wouldn't be bad. No, they they don't. They don't use the chemicals like these mm -hmm. other people do. Mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff is easier, um, less headache, and everything else for these people too. And you don't know if that stuff's bad for f fifty years anyway. No. You know, until, it's not like they even know it's bad until we. You know, my brother mm -hmm. um, in two thousand twenty-two, he he died of leukemia. Is that right? How old was he? Fifty nine. So I mean, I mean, this—you you never heard these things like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, then like I said, I had a friend, fifty-five years old. Uh, we uh, went to his funeral Friday. Me so, and you may be on borrowed time. We are. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. <laughs> Boy. Well, let me ask you this: <clears throat> Are you on? Are you into politics in Ath or Athens? Are you? You're not on any. Are you on? Are, see, are you on the Athens City School Board? Is that right? No, I'm on the uh, uh, Athens City Council. Oh, city. Oh, that's. So you're one of the what seven or eight? No, there's only five of us. Um, oh. Three of us was elected two years ago, uh, two a year and a half ago. I've served a year, a year and six months or something like that. Is it harder than you thought? No, because I had been doing a lot of public records requests, uh, looking at uh, expense records, um, documentation, mm -hmm. and uh, I knew what I was getting into. And uh, we uh, we won um, in what was it a year and a half ago, and um, so you ran a regular campaign like you would. Yes, I ran a regular campaign. One of the big deals was that we were I was pushing for term limits. Uh, for the city of Athens Council. There are some people that's been on there for 20 and 26 years. And actually, um, we we passed term limits in December uh, get, uh, for, our, for our charter. And it is going, it is in the, uh, the um, state legislature right now. And uh, our state representative Mark Cochran uh, uh, told us in a meeting uh, last week <clears throat> that it was actually going to be voted on probably in the next two or three weeks. So that would, what would be the limit, the term limit? The term limits is going to be, I wanted two four-year terms, uh, but I could only get everybody else to, to um, okay three four-year terms. So 12. 12 total years. Does don't have to be consecutive yeah. or anything like that, but... But Seems we, like 12 years would be long enough to implement your, four years is not enough to, well, to get get in there. And eight years is probably long enough. Yes. Well, it, I, I think I think eight years is, is more than enough because, um, you know, you're looking at, you know, I, I've been in it for a year and three or four months, uh -huh. five months, and, and I've been pushing the agenda real heavy, and our city council has been doing a lot better um, uh, getting some of these things uh, uh, fixed. I mean, we just we just did uh, with the city council uh, uh, and uh, the county commission and um, IDB. Uh, it, it's there in it's a it's another organization for industrial growth. Mm -hmm. uh, we just passed an eight million dollar TIF uh, for a developer to do ninety three million dollars in the city of Athens. So there's a lot of things coming up right now that uh, that's going to be positive for the ads. And that's the reason why I keep on saying that that uh, we need to look at positive growth. Well, you're a busy person, aren't you? Extremely. I don't... <laughs> you're lucky to have me today. Because <laughs> I was out... I was after... Yeah. Uh, after I, I uh, finished the hawk, I had another call. A guy had a... Uh, a pheasant that just came in his yard. So I, I had to go and pick it up. And I've got it at my house. I'm gonna take it to to rehab uh, probably tomorrow. Does that get in the way of your day job, or do you, or do you 
or are you one of those guys that it switches back on at seven o'clock in the morning? To oh, I uh, when I leave here, I'll hmm. be going back home, and I will be doing quotes and emails and everything else, getting ready for this week. So, so I'll uh, my day starts uh, six in the morning, and it finishes around uh, ten eleven. Uh, sometimes 12 o'clock at night if there's a lot of quotes that I need to get done. Any TV time? I don't watch TV too much. My wife gets mad at me. <laughs> she, um, I don't watch the news. I don't, I, yeah. I, I don't because the news now, no matter what you say, whether it be CNN, Fox, ABC, whatever, everything is, uh, is, is too much of a, uh, uh, lopsided it's, it, it is a commentary instead of a news agency <clears throat> and i don't like things like that only news i watch is scott adams you ever heard of him uh -uh. no sir i've watched him every day for about five years he does about an hour he t he goes over the news just what it is and that's the only that's the only place i get it well that's where they used to do it yeah that's where and he doesn't know he's just going over it well i mean but, when you have when you have uh, news agencies and regardless if you're a Trump or Trump supporter or not, doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's irrelevant. But but the problem I see is if this entity can attack this political mm -hmm. opponent, then it can be reversed. Mm -hmm. And I don't like things like that. Mm -hmm. Regardless, regardless if it's Democrat, Republican, or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's hard to believe anything anymore. It is. Yes, sir. All I know is I'm here. <laughs> We're just a small peon. Do you, do you, are you going to get started involved in another hobby or are you pretty well satisfied with these three things, three major things? Let me tell you something. I, uh, um, there's three things that really resonate with me <clears throat> and that's ki children. Uh -huh. uh, I'm very adamant about kids and, and trying to help kids, especially kids that's fostered and, doesn't have uh, uh, families trying to help them out, mm -hmm. uh, make sure they get Christmas or birthdays. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, of course my veterans. My veterans I'm very, very passionate about because they signed their name in blood mm -hmm. for me to be able to stay here and, and, and speak my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course animals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I feel like that the animals, uh, a lot of the animals are, are being abused because uh, we've got some sick people that now sometimes it's a little different, mm -hmm. but some people uh, are uh, uh, have abused animals and and we need to get those things fixed. There needs to be real consequences for hurting an animal for no reason. Yes, all they're doing most of the time is taking their anger out on something that can't fight them back, mm -hmm. and and. That bothers me mm -hmm. because, hey, listen, I've got a, uh, I've got a dog. He's, I probably have him, see, I, we've had him 11 years. He's probably 12 years old. But I had a rough day one day and in my old house, and I kept on running him off. He's a mangy, skinny little thing. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> one day I had a very, very bad day and sitting underneath the shade tree just trying to re reflect mm -hmm. on the day, and he came and jumped my lap. <laughs> been my best buddy since. I had one like that. It slept on my leg for 13 years, and I can't even hardly bring it up right now. Yep, yep. That's been, uh, been my best friend. I've got a cat out there, and she runs the place. She <laughs> thinks she's the queen bee. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Banjo, <clears throat> when my wife's getting ready for church, I'll, uh, uh, he knows when it's Sunday morning. Hey, I don't know. I don't he, know how they know it. Dude. He knows it, but he knows that I'll go uh, get me and me and my wife something to eat, mm -hmm. and uh, he and I always take him. And he knows as soon as I start putting my shoes on, he's at the door. He knows you're not going to the normal day or something. It's, don't it's the funniest thing, and uh, but he's he's getting old now, and but uh, hope I like got him ten more years, but it don't look like I'm going to. But may, you know, but he's he's been my buddy. I got a, a dog at home that you have to give, you know, they all got their own personalities. She has to drink water before she eats. 
<laughs> now, most dogs are after She will not eat till she's drunk first. Isn't that crazy? It's backwards. It's, I've never seen a dog like that. I tell you what, they are they are very... And she uh, won't bark. She'll just do her paw like that. Like, I, I don't understand. Yeah, and I, I, I go, and I help the Humane Society quite a bit. <clears throat> and looking at the things that, that I have seen through... Uh, happened with the abuse animals and everything else. Uh, the city of Athens, we just spent, I think, $2.6 million on a brand new animal shelter. Mm -hmm. Should be done by. Is that, is, so the county's, you don't have an SPCA like we no. do? <clears throat> no, we, uh, we have a, it's a city shelter where mm -hmm. the county helps in and all the other <clears throat> cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just now building another. Uh, facility it's it's finished it's it's the old dpa building and it's been refurbished and uh that's supposed to be in may uh, the end of may i think it is when it's going to be open so that, that that's going to help out quite a bit boy animal stray animals and cats are a big issue isn't it i wish there's some way i could figure out how uh spay and neutering uh to push <coughs> the spay and neutering because well my wife uh <coughs> My wife last week found a small puppy not even winged on the mm. side of the road. Somebody God. just threw it out. And uh, Can you believe a sick individual would do that? There's been a few times that people has called me where they found buckets of puppies. Mm. And I can't if they hadn't have, if they had not have picked that bucket up, those bucket those, those puppies would have fried in the hot sun and died. Mm. And uh, that's that's some of the things that, that I've seen and, and, and We've got to figure something out. Jail, as a, as jail, a, jail time. Yeah. Oh yes, I agree. It's they were be put in a bucket. Way I think instead out in the hot sun. Where they I go by going. this dog place where they keep a dog at, and they keep it chained up, and all it does is runs around that tree all day long. It's just <laughs> sick, isn't it? I just don't understand it. I. Uh, I you know, the, and they put them on logging chains, like they're... Yeah, you know that's hard on them. Yeah, it's, it, the things I've Aren't seen... They, why do they even have a dog? It's like they're like a want to be a warden. Oh, yes. The yeah. jail warden. Mm. Yes. Well, Larry, anything else? What's your website? Uh, my website. The, for your, for your uh, wild animals. I don't have or, website, or a Facebook. But, uh, I, my uh, my Facebook is McMinn County Voices, and then uh, uh, there's there's another one, ETW uh, Wildlife, mm -hmm. and then uh, of course uh, the bigger site that is uh, uh, Steve Sherwin's old site is the uh, City of Athens original page. Mm -hmm. We uh, we do a lot. We try to keep everybody informed of everything, and we try to make sure that to show people where all these rehabs are to help out. Uh, and, um, you know, Happy Nest uh, Raptors down in, down in Signal Mountain, mm -hmm. she's, she's, all these are 501Cs. They're, they're not state funded in any way, form mm -hmm. or fashion. And they have to feed these animals and they have to get them vet checked. And uh, uh, the one that I just released today, you know, she, she had a amputated talon, but mm -hmm. they would have put her down if they did. Somebody's got to pay for it, don't they? Yes, and that's uh, one of the things. But I'm I'm thankful that uh, that God has gave me the opportunity to come down here and and uh, talk to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I I love I love our community, uh, both in Cleveland mm -hmm. and, and even mm -hmm. McMinn County. I love my my town, Athens, mm -hmm. Tennessee, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I was asked to. Uh, to run for city council, and I did, and and uh, we're uh, we're trying to make a better and uh, better place for our, our great city. And it's a fantastic place to live, love the people, um, and uh, we're we're trying every way in the world to help out in a way any way we can. So I do appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to come down here. Larry, I appreciate it. Yes, you're sir. you're all you were cracked up to be. I don't know about. You.